Hello, this is Mike. Welcome to Bitfixer. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about a project that's been in the works for a while now. This is the Romulator Z80. This is the version of the Romulator working with the Z80 microprocessor. Very similar to the, um, the 6502 version, which I have over here. Uh, the main difference being the, uh, of course, the pinout of the processor and also the uh, the two different CPUs access memory and have some different features. So there is there are definitely some new cases to handle in the Z80. Um, some of them being that memory and I/O requests are handled differently on the Z80, um, whereas on the 6502 it's basically one flat memory map and you don't have the notion of a separate I/O request or memory request, uh, among other things. So um, been a little tricky to try to get everything packed in here, but uh, we're going to give this prototype a try. This is the, the board with just the surface mount parts, and then this is the built-up version. It has the same, same exact FPGA board, so uh, it will be slightly different firmware, but uh, you can use exactly the same hardware, uh, but a different interface board for the new processor. And uh, we are going to be trying it on this, a Timex Sinclair 1000, which was the, uh, the name for the Sinclair ZX81 when it was sold in the United States. Um, I think there's a slight difference being that the uh, ZX81 came with 1K of RAM built in. Uh, this comes with 2K, uh, but, but other than that, they're very, very similar, possibly identical. Anyway, let's uh, get started and see how this works. So first we will go ahead and get the ZX81 slash Timex Sinclair 1000 opened up. Then we will detach the main board here, being careful not to damage the uh, ribbon cables between the board and the keyboard, which are basically a paper-like substance, but they are pretty, uh, they look pretty delicate, so don't want to break them. And for a display, unfortunately this computer does not have built-in composite video out, but it does have RF out. Uh, I just didn't, didn't have a convenient RF receiver at the moment, so I am connecting to pin 16 on the uh, ULA chip. I believe it's called the ULA chip but that is uh, TV out on that chip. So this is probably not the, uh, the proper way to do a composite mod on this machine, but it does, does the job for a uh, quick solution if I plug it into a composite monitor. So now that we have everything set up, we'll go ahead and try this out without modification, just to make sure that the computer is in working condition before we start messing around with it. So once I plugged it in, I found out that the machine is indeed working properly. Right now I'm going to print out the contents of an address in memory called RAMTOP, which shows how much memory is detected in the machine. So that's a uh, address 16389 and 16388. So 16388 is equal to zero, and 16389 is equal to 72, which means that the full memory map as detected is 72 times 256, and that corresponds to a 2K uh, total memory, which makes sense for this machine. At this point, I'm just going ahead and putting a socket on the pins of the Romulator Z80 so we don't damage the socket and then we are ready to try it out. I've uploaded a firmware onto here that should bypass the entire memory map, so if this works, it just means that uh, the FPGA is not do essentially not doing anything, but we are just testing that the board itself, the basic design is working, and that the mechanism for switching between, uh, the, the switching the data bus between the FPGA and the main board data bus is working. And just taking a quick look to make sure that the uh, 
Momulator looks like it's properly inserted and we are ready to go. All right, this is the first test of the Z80 Romulator here. Let's see, I've placed it into the computer here in the Z80 socket, and it is currently set to bypass the entire memory map. So this is really just testing the board design itself, making sure that there's no critical errors, anything like that. So uh, let's give this a shot. All right, let's see what happens. The light went on. Let's see what comes up on the screen. If anything? So attempt one was not successful and we get nothing on the screen afterwards. So this was the first attempt here um, that didn't quite work. And what I think might be the problem is that the uh, this weight V weight signal is not being driven right now. Or sorry, that's a uh, so I guess it's the R weight because that's the output. This signal is not being driven, so the CPU might not be actually running because it might just be in a wait state. So I'm going to try to uh, set that signal and we'll see if that does any better. All right, this is attempt number two. I have assigned that wait signal to uh, be, it basically just uh, relays the wait signal coming from the motherboard onto uh, the pin going out to the CPU. So here we go. I'm going to plug this in and see what happens. Oh, wow. Look at that. All right. Yeah. So there's a K down there. Okay. So that means, uh, that means it's this, at least this part is working. It's the by it's bypassing everything, but the, the switching between the data lines is uh, at least working in this case because it's, uh, yeah, it's just enabling the bus and disabling the output from the FPGA. Okay, so next thing to do is, well, let's just, uh, let's just print out, I actually have to look up what that number was. I'm going to see what the total memory is again, just to confirm that it matches what we saw uh, before. Okay, so it is print. Uh, let's see, peak, and it's the RAM top uh, value, which is 16389. And here we go. All right, I don't know if you can, let me just move that up. Yep, so 72. So that's the same, 72 times 256 is, uh, whatever it is, 18 thousand something so that's that just means it's still the the 2k internal ram so that's normal so next i will try to add something so that we can add some additional ram let's add some ram on top of that uh that 2k let's see if we can go for to replicate a 16k ram expansion on this thing all right next up i added the uh Let's see, I, added, I set up the data lines here. So we have data in and data out. Uh, switchably, switching, switching back and forth depending on uh, the other signals if you're in the right address area. And let's see, set up, set up the RAM here. So, and then the RAM chip select here is, I've just hard coded some addresses. So if we're between this address and this address, then we've, we select the onboard RAM instead of the the onboard FPGA RAM instead of what's on the uh, the motherboard. So uh, let's give it a try. Um, yeah, hopefully what we'll see is that uh, there'll be more memory available on the on the machine. All right, this is with the RAM some RAM replacement added. So hopefully we'll see there's something different. Hopefully it will work and it will actually boot up properly. So let's power it on. Okay, well, didn't work. So we definitely, we broke something. So let's see, let's take a look and see if we can figure that out. All right, found a little bug. I had the, the enable signals for the motherboard and the FPGA RAM reversed. So let's try it again. No, okay. Oh, oh, 
What's that? G. Huh. Okay. I don't know enough to even know what that means, but something's happening. There's a G there. Does it still let me do stuff here? Print? No. Okay. It's not responsive. Huh. Okay. Hmm. I don't know what G means, but <laughs> I'll figure it out. Okay, let's try something else. All right, I tried it again, and now only I'm only replacing a single byte. So I have it between 18432 and 18433. So just wanted to see if for some reason that was affecting anything. So let's look again at, let's see, print, and Peak one six three eight nine and it's still seventy two and now let's do print peak one six uh, three eight eight and two okay. All right, well that was zero before. Um, see, it's two now. Huh, that's interesting. So, it looks like we have replaced two bytes. So that means if its address is greater than or equal to 18432 and less than or equal to 18433, so yeah, that would be two, two bytes. So, uh, I guess it's working for yeah, it's working for two bytes. I don't know why it didn't work for the full 32K, but let's add a little bit more and see what we get, if that works. I'll add, let's try adding 1K of RAM and see if that works. Okay, another test. Now we're placing up to address 19456. So what I'm expecting to see is that we'll, uh, we should see 76 blocks of 256 bytes instead of 72. So, let's see if it still works. And now we have a G. Okay. Interesting. Oh. Let's, okay. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Function. Tab. Yeah, I guess I don't really understand this enough to know what's happening. I will have to read a little bit to understand what this even means. I don't know why uh, Yeah, it started up with K when I only replaced the two bytes, but now I'm replacing more and I get G. So maybe it's possible someone who knows more about this computer would know what's going on, but I'm going to read, read a little bit about it and see if I can figure it out. Okay, well I looked for a while at the uh, looking at the schematic for the ZX81, and this is not exactly the same as the uh, Timex Sinclair 1000, uh, sp uh, specifically the RAM over here. They have two different, you have two uh, 2114 chips here for a total of 1K, and the, the Sinclair 1000 has uh, 2K in a single chip. Uh, but I think I have a general idea what's happening, which is that, I mean, I think it boils down to the RAM that's used as video RAM and is used for the display because uh, here I see one this is the uh, I think it's called the ULA if I'm not mistaken but this is the logic chip which controls uh, looks like it controls a number of things and uh, yeah those of you who are uh, more aware of how the ZX81 works uh, yeah, forgive me because I'm just learning how uh, learning how this computer works but uh, we have shared data lines here between the CPU and the and the ULA, and I presume what's happening here is that in the addresses that are considered video memory, um, this is actually reading the values on the data bus, and that is that ends up generating the the TV signal which comes out on pin 16 here. So, if I am totally disabling this whole amount of memory, or if I'm not uh, you know I'm not replacing the memory properly, um, then it, it's probably, uh, I don't know, I don't know exactly, but it's, uh, it's causing some problems because 
I'm not excluding video RAM specifically. And what I found was that if I, I can actually replace the 2K of RAM and if I, if I, uh, if I, I can replace it as far as the CPU is concerned, but I can continue to let this RAM operate to, um, for, for writes basically. So, uh, every time this, the CPU does a write, it'll write to the FPGA and it will write, write to this RAM. And that means when this address gets read, it's kind of confusing. The CPU will read from the FPGA, but the ULA will end up seeing what the onboard RAM is writing. So when you do that, it actually works. Um, but I did find that when I replace a small amount of memory, just like the two bytes we saw, then you can actually, you can write to it, you can read from it, and the, the two byte, byte replacement actually works. So I th what I think is happening is that I think that the basic design is okay, uh, with some exceptions, but the, uh, the RAM replacement is actually happening. So what's next? Um, well, the first thing that I found is that Looking at the schematic here, it's very similar. This is very similar to the schematic for the 6502 version, but here we have the, this is the connector to the FPGA board. And I have, you know, we have all the address lines and we have all the data lines and we have these weight, the weight signals, uh, but the signaling from the Z80 is slightly different than 6502. The write and read signals are two separate lines. And also there are two lines, um, Let's look at where the CPU is. We have separate lines for accessing memory and I.O. So memory request and I.O. request. So, um, and in this design, I actually neglected to get those signals over to the FPGA. So uh, in this iteration, we have no way of knowing whether a read or write is specifically reading to memory or reading to I.O. And that would be relevant in low addresses in memory because the Z80 starts at address zero. So, and the, typically the IO ports are gonna be a low number as well. So if I'm writing, you know, reading or writing from IO port zero, you would have no way of knowing whether you're doing that or you're writing from, or you're reading, you know, ROM address zero. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm do an iteration on the design. I'm gonna get those signals over to the FPGA and I think we're also going to need potentially like a single external logic chip because we have really used almost every line here. Um, we don't have a lot to spare. So we will actually need to bring in memory request, IO request. And I believe we also need this, uh, this M1 signal as well because that distinguishes between a, an opcode fetch and a data fetch. Uh, and that's actually used by the ZX81 uh, in terms of its memory mirroring. The memory map on the ZX81 was a little hard to follow. Uh, there's a lot of mirroring and bank, you know, the, the ROM gets mirrored to different locations in the address space. But anyway, the I'm pretty convinced that the current iteration is actually doing what, mostly what I expected to do. I'm going to try it again on a simpler, hopefully I can find a simpler, uh, Z80 computer that uh, doesn't have as much uh, bank switching <laughs> or mirroring going on, and then uh, we'll be able to prove it. I'll be able to prove it to myself that it's working. But next uh, next step is to get a new design that has the right signals going to the FPGA, so it can actually work. Well, that is the end of the first part of our adventure, getting the Romulator Z80 working with the Timing Sinclair 1000 aka Sinclair ZX81. Next up will be to redesign this board to route the signals properly, the memory request, IO request, and M1 signals, so that the FPGA can see them and operate accordingly, so we can distinguish different regions of memory um, or different accesses to memory and IO properly. And then we will try it again on this computer and possibly some other Z80 machines. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to uh, leave a like or subscribe to the channel, and see you next time. Bye.